Okay, I'm recording part five of my question and answer video. Um, I asked on my Facebook fan page, the link is down below to my fan page, if they had any questions on hair bows or tutus and stuff like that. So that's what I'm answering. Uh, the next question is, where do you buy your, your clips from and which alligator clips are best for staying in the hair? Most of the clips that I, um, that I get in orders are actually the alligator clips, which I get either from Sally's Beauty Salon or from eBay. You can always find good prices on eBay for, for a lot of them. But um, like if I, if I need them like right away, I'll go to Sally's and I'll just get them, which they come from Sally's. They come, I get these. And it's a double, the double prong alligator clips. And it comes 100 in a pack, and I think it's 5 or $6, which to me is kind of expensive. But like I usually only go there and I get those um, like if I need them like right away. Um, and it says, which alligator clips are better for staying in hair? I've never, I know some people like to use the ones with the teeth, or they like to use the ones, um, it depends, I guess, it depends on, to me it depends on the customer. Whatever the customer wants, I'll, I'll get for them. Um, the ones with the teeth, I don't like them because it breaks the hair. Um, I've had issues of, like, you're trying to pull it out and then it gets stuck in the hair and then you go to rip it and... I don't know. I, I to me, I don't like I don't like the ones with the teeth. But then again, to each their own. Every uh, like every parent, every child is different and stuff like that. So whatever, whatever my customers want, that's what um, I always give them. So the French barrettes and all that different stuff. I rarely get uh, orders for those and stuff. Um, so I usually just get those at Hobby Lobby and stuff like that. I still have a lot um, that I have somewhere. I have to find them. <laughs> I think it's somewhere on my desk. But, um, yeah, so that's basically it for that question. How do you keep the tutus from bunching up once they're worn? Um, I already answered that. You use nylon tool, um, or you can spray it with the, 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 this spray bottle back there. It's like three-fourths water and then one-fourth fabric softener, liquid fabric softener, and you just mix it together. You just lightly spray it on the tool and then you run your fingers through it. And that usually helps. Um... But then again, don't do that unless you ask the, say if you're selling tutus, don't spray it with anything unless you ask the um, customer if it's okay. Because you don't know if their child's allergic to it or whatever and stuff like that. So usually I don't um, unless the customer requests it. Um, so yeah, if you're going to if you're gonna sell stuff, <clears throat> please always make sure to ask, like, is your child allergic to it? This is the brand that I use or whatever, or what brand should I use if you want me to spray it? Um, of the fabric softener, so, so um, just just to be 100% safe, you know. Um, but most of the time, I don't spray mine. Um, I'll let the some, like if they if they ask, I'll, I'll let them know what they can do. That way, they can go buy their own products and stuff like that, whatever's safe for their child. But you don't want to sell anything or give anything to uh, to a customer that's going to harm their child. You know, that's the last thing you you're going to want to do. So just be 100% 100% safe and ask the the customer first before you put anything even even if you're starching or spraying your, your bows um, especially with hairspray and stuff like that always ask because you never know you never know if the the child is allergic to something you don't want them to have an allergic reaction and then you know give you bad reviews and stuff like that that's the last thing you want plus you want to you know for the child's sake as well you don't want to harm the child in any way or whoever's wearing the bow um, what else I to say this person asks, is there a certain bow that is better as a base bow, the TBB or a pinwheel? TBB is the basic boutique. Um, I use both. Sorry, I forgot so close. Um, I use both, depending. I know that the bigger the bow, um, like for the, yeah, for a base bow, like for the boutique stack bow, the bigger the bow, I usually use, see this one, it's the, I don't know if you can see, it's the, oh, what's it called? The basic boutique that I put on the back. The pinwheel, um, I use on sometimes, but I guess if you're using like a thicker, uh, not a thicker, like a wider ribbon, like the 1.5 inch, the pinwheel might be good. It depends. Depends on what the customer wants as well. Um, so, but most of the time I use the basic boutique to put on the, on the back for the base bow. But the basic boutique will make the bow bigger. It will, it will make the bow stand up more and stand out more and it might make it a little heavier as well so whatever the customer wants um, if they want the bow to be a little flatter 
Um, you can go ahead and use the pinwheel because the pinwheel bow is, is a flat bow. So you can use that as a base bow to hook. Usually the base bows are used to hold the spikes. To hold the spikes up. That's basically what the, the base bow is used for. Uh, this person said, I'm trying to figure out how to make a bow in the center of the over-the-top bows that is more up and down loops rather than a wide bow. I think they're talking about this, this pink bow, this, the, the top bow, this pink one. Um, I think they're asking me <clears throat> how I can make it more loopy. Um, oh yeah, they're probably asking me how I'm... I have a tutorial on that. I think I answered that question in part one or part two. But I have a tutorial on how I make those bows more loopy. You just have to twist the loops more when, you, when you're making the bow. You just have to twist them more. Uh, curve them more, I guess you can say. But I have a tutorial. Um, so I guess you can search my videos and look for that. I think it's the title of it's how to make a bow, how to make the loops more loopy or something like that. Uh, this person asks, do you only sell through custom orders or do you ever do crafty fairs or farmers market? I only do custom orders. Um, I was invited to a fair, a, a craft fair or something like that, like a year or two ago, but I didn't go. I wasn't able to. Um, but for those, you need to have like. I get so many orders that I don't really have time to just to make a stash of bows. Um, I just concentrate on orders, and if I ever do have downtime, it's like um, I usually just spend it, you know, watching TV or relaxing or something like that. So. Um, most of the time, I just I just sell through custom orders, like whatever people want, which has been doing pretty well for me. Mm, excuse me. And I know the craft fairs and the farmers markets are good for advertisement, especially if you don't have like a that great of a fan base um, or that great of a customer base. Sorry, I'm like bouncing my leg. <laughs> um, hope that's not bothering you. So yeah, that's good for. Um, so if you have in your area, if you have any craft fairs or whatever, go go to those. Go to those and. And because a lot of people like to touch the the product before, like they like to touch it, they like to see it with their own their own eyes and everything, and try it out and stuff like that before they buy it. And it's hard to do that online. Um, so, and it's hard to get customers online because they're just seeing pictures of it. They're not, they can't touch it, they can't, you know, examine it or whatever. Um, so, if you have craft fairs or farmers markets, go to those, and that that will help you spread your your fan base out. Um, so, hold on. Uh, this person asks, how do you make your your adorable tutu dresses and where do you get the crochet top parts of the dress? Every time I try to find the thicker crochet tops, I can only find the skinny headbands and the tutus, <coughs> or in the, the waist tutu crochet bands. I get those online. You can't find them in stores unless you have, there's a store in your area that sells them, but where I live... There's no stores. I get those on tedazzled.com, T-D-A-Z-Z-L-E-D.com, um, tedazzled.com, and, or, like, depending on, I think on Tedazzled, they have the 6-inch, the 8-inch, and the 10-inch, I think. They don't have a 7-inch, they don't have, like, a 4-inch or a 5-inch or whatever, um, or the 9-inch and stuff, so if you're looking for, like, a specific... Like, if you're looking for, like, the 7-inch or the 9-inch, you might want to go on eBay to get those, because I know they have those on eBay. But Tedazzled has them for very, very cheap on, um, uh, for the crochet tops. Um, it says, how do you recommend pricing your tutus and bows? I try to price mine lower than, um, other people, but then again, still be able to make a profit. Um... And also, I basically kind of price, I try to like triple my profit on how much, like say if I, if I buy a tool and I spend like, like five dollars on, on tool, just to make a tutu or whatever. Or like say all the material comes out to like five dollars, I'll sell it for like fifteen, um, just to make like a triple profit, uh, or double profit or triple, double, I don't know. Uh, I always like try, to, I always like to try to make more than what I spent. At least a little bit more than what I spent. But I don't like to, to have my prices super high. Um, I do look around at other businesses and stuff like that. And um, I always try to keep mine lower than everybody else. So, yeah. 
just basically average out what you spend and if you're spending too much and you're trying to sell it because you want to you want to make a profit off of it and it's not selling then I suggest look for places to buy stuff for cheaper which I have a list of websites that have a lot of cheap stuff um, on my face Facebook fan page the link will be down below um, it's in my notes section on my Facebook fan page of where I get all my material and stuff like that so uh, I already answered that. What site do you use to purchase your crochet two tops? I just answered that. How do you ship your bows and tutus? Do you use flat rate boxes? How do you make sure the bows don't get smashed and the tutus don't get all flat and stuck together? Again, use boxes. Don't use those. Where did I put them? Oh, don't use these to ship your your bows. Even your tutus. D don't don't use these these envelopes. Um. You want your bows to get to the customer just as good as they looked online or just as good as you made them. You don't want to put them in a flat rate envelope and then have it get squished and smashed and things broken and the ribbon just all ugly and messed up and stuff like that. I went a long time ago when I first started selling bows, I would ship them in those because it was cheap. Um, I do not recommend it. Please put them in boxes. That's all I, I gotta say. It's more professional. Um, keeps the bows from getting squished and stuff. And the tutus also. Um, I, I put my tutus in like plastic bags, like plastic bags, um, each tutu in a different plastic bag, that way they're not, that way they, first of all they don't get wet, second of all, um, the tool, I, I have the tool straightened out, so like I, I bunch, like I, I don't know how to describe it, describe it, I don't have one, I should have left one out so I can show you guys, sorry it's so dark, um, but I put them in a plastic bag and I make sure all the tools like straight. I don't I don't bunch it up or crunch it up or anything like that. I make sure all the tools straight. I put them in plastic bags and I uh, lay them flat in a box. <clears throat> so if they order more than one tutu, the tutus are not touching each other and they don't get tangled and messed up and wrinkled and all that different stuff. So <coughs> excuse me. Um so yeah. And I ship it. USPS first class. If it's under 13 ounces, you can ship it first class. It usually ships for around two or three dollars. Um, but if it's more than 13 ounces, you're gonna have to go priority, which is around can be up as high as like depending on the the weight for bows and stuff. It's usually not higher than like two pounds, depending on how many bows you put in a box. Um, but I think eight dollars is the most I've ever spent on priority for bows and tutus so yeah um when did you start your business and what steps do you take as far as getting your name registering for it what about the state taxes how long does it take for you to get how long does it take you to get where you are today and what should I expect along the way I hope you do this again um where I live the, the only what was I going to say where I live, I don't think you need to have like a tax ID number or anything like that. If you're selling on the street, I know you need to have like a seller's permit and stuff like that. If you're selling on the street. And like, I think at, if you go to like the, the, I'm not 100% sure, but I know, because I live in Texas, so correct me if I'm wrong on this. Um, but if you go to like the, the fairs or whatever, I think most of the fairs that I've been invited to you have to put like a down payment in and stuff like that although I do um, add this all this stuff to my taxes at the end of the year so um, but like I'm not really 100% sure because uh, I don't sell on the street I just sell online I sell on eBay and I sell on and I know PayPal has asked me for my tax information and stuff like that since I get so much money coming into PayPal which is fine I put all that information in and I um, do all my taxes at the end of the year for all that stuff I think it's why I only sell online I don't sell on the streets um, so if I was gonna sell on the streets I would have to get a a tax permit or, or seller's permit and stuff like that to sell on the streets so um, yeah it took me I've been, she also asked how long it took me to get where I am today. It took me five years. So, yeah. Uh, that's basically it. 
yeah, so I do get taxed. Um, I'm not doing this under the table or anything like that. Because I know PayPal has asked for all my information. Um, so they send me a, a thing at the, the end of the year, which I do all my taxes and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. That's the only, that's because that's the reason why I only use PayPal and stuff like that. That way everything is just documented and it's just right there and stuff like that. So, um, but I think you have to be making a certain amount a year or a certain amount a month or something like that for them to ask for your tax information. But yes, they asked for my tax information. I gave them my tax information and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's basically it. That's, this video is extra long. But, um, so those are all the questions that I got. Mm, excuse me. If you have any other questions or whatever, you know, go to my Facebook fan page. The link will be down below. And you can send me a message and I'll get back to you. So I hope this was very helpful. And I'm sorry this was all over the place. Um, I asked these questions like a week ago and then I was like, I better do the video. So, yep, that's basically it. I guess I'll see you guys later.